Hey, we're back at Mystic Koi, and I want to talk about the Kohaku a little bit more. You know, we talked about how it begins with Kohaku and ends with Kohaku. It's a pretty deep subject, so I want to touch on it a little bit more. Sean, take us to the next step. Yeah, sure, Eric. Uh, I have this great Sanke I'm going to pull up right now. Uh, I want to show you the Kohaku that is inside the Sanke. Great. Show, show you the pattern, what's going on. Let's check it out. Check out this massive babe. <laughs> She's hot. How old is she? Four years old. Four. It's a four-year-old Taisho Sanke from Koda Koi Farm. And uh, certainly you can see how, how beautiful the shape is on her and, mm -hmm. and her white. But really why we pulled her up is you take all that sumi away, you take all that black away, and you're left with this bam, bam, bam. An absolute beautiful Kohaku pattern that right. we talked about. Big old steps on her, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So she's four years old. And so she's, how long have you had her? Did you just bring her in? Yeah, I just brought her in this fall. Wow, she's great. Yeah. So she's been in some mud ponds? Yeah, yeah. For four summers she's spent in four mud summers. ponds. Four summers. Really, really neat. Um, how, how does she get the privilege of staying in those mud ponds for four summers? Tell us that. So the breeder, uh, as Tosai, or like less than a year old, uh, picked this fish basically because it had no deformities. It was looking uh, really, really nice. We had no idea where the sumi was going to come up. Sumi is black. Yeah. Uh, it was just, at that time, just a red and white fish. So it looked just like a kohaku, right? Uh, he doesn't know where the black's going to come up. So he'll throw them in a mud pond for, for the summer. She'll eat a ton of food, grow, and that black will start coming in. And if the pattern is where he wants it to be, great, he's gonna keep it for another year. If he's not real happy with it, he's gonna sell it to me as a two-year-old at a pretty inexpensive price. Right. Uh, so, so, so let's get this straight. So <clears throat> the breeder looks at the fish, thinks it has potential, Right. throws it in the mud pond for a season. Yeah. And then at the end of the season, they drain that mud pond out, catch all the fish out of there. During the fall, that's what yeah. I was doing in November. Nice. Going out with the guys and harvesting these koi from these big mud ponds. So at that point, they re-evaluate them and exactly. decide to keep them another year or put them back. Right. I saw this one, I had to have it, and uh, he made me an okay deal on it, so I was able to All right, able good. to score. Great. All right, well, let's take, a, let's take a look at something else. Give us some more oh, Kohaku yeah. and... Absolutely, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's let her go. Beautiful. This, sir, is an Asagi. Yes. And I do love this one. Believe it or not, this is where Kohaku comes from. This is this is where it originates from. Yeah. Can you believe it? This yeah. is a I mean a blue and gray fish, a little bit of orange on the side of it. Yeah. Uh, this is where we talked about the history of Kohaku last time. Yes. And uh, I really thought this would be a great example to show you uh, the evolution and the change of koi. From, from where they started off. So was that, you said about 100 or 120 years ago? Yeah, 120 years ago. So this one maybe took 20 years to like get to this point, you think? Or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, because this is very, very similar to a, to a carp in color with the, with the brocading we see. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but this, these little things started to develop 100, 120 years ago and Absolutely. Probably a hundred years ago, approximately, something like this was coming out. Like, hey, look what we got going. You got it. Either yeah. the breeder had something in mind that he was trying to uh, to make happen, or one day went out there, was pulling fish, and he saw this one that's totally cool, and he's like, oh, this is awesome. I gotta right. set this aside. Gotta keep this one. So, uh, in a normal normal asagi, especially asagi back then, the red line here that we see here mm -hmm. and here yeah. was a lot more pronounced. And they wanted to bring that red from the bottom and wrap it all the way up to the top. Yeah. Uh, and while doing so, they're able to eliminate that uh, bluish color and have that snow white background. Beautiful. Let's put a Kohaku in next to it. Yeah, that'll be fun. We got a jumper. Yeah, Sagi here. 
tend, they tend to do that quite a bit. They like jumping. Let's see if she calms out of Saki down. So uh, yeah, I wanted to pull up this Kwaku here. Just, just look at those fish. They're look completely different, but this is this is where this fish came from. Right. Yeah, I love I love going back in history and understanding how how they evolved them like that. You know, I mean, absolutely. It's not an evolution, but I mean, they've it's the evolution of koi breeding. Exactly. Like say, yeah. You got it. You got it. And it, it's great to see the uh, you can see the dedication that these koi breeders have put into right. and the effort that's gone into making these fish. So when they get that fish that's just perfect, they can command the dollar that they want. Absolutely. They've been doing it for a hundred some odd years, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Good for them, man. Good for them. Yeah. All right. No. We have, have ourselves a nice three-step, huh? Yeah, we do. You know, the Sanke that you picked up, that huge four-year-old, had yes. a nice three-step pattern, almost similar to that, only the last island was pulled back farther. Pulled back a little bit farther. Yeah, but it had that little like horseshoe in it It did too. have that horseshoe, yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Uh, which is pretty amazing because it's a fairly unique pattern uh, and that's where you really can see how it begins and ends with Kohaku. It's that right. same unusual three, three steps. I think that was a good, good, compar good comparison, yeah. Uh, again, what we're looking at in Kohaku is, is that nice body shape, beautiful white, uh, and then gorgeous, gorgeous red, fiery heat. Uh, this this is also a two-year-old koi, and so it's still developing, it's still maturing, and we can see that. Pretty jumbo for two years. Yeah, not bad, yeah, not bad yeah. at all. Uh, if you look here at the front scales, yes, uh, it's a little bit cloudy. I was right? going to ask you to talk about that. Yeah, that pink color, uh, we call that sashi, and it means that there's red still developing. There's red underneath that white scale, right, coming coming up. Uh, it's like shingled effect right there. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But, but you don't see it on this upper one right here. Right, you don't see it. And you don't see it in the back. So on this back, back yep. pattern here, yeah. the back pattern here, and the back pattern here, it looks as if uh, a razor blade was taken. And you can see how you can actually see how the scale finishes. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, that's what we call kiwa. So is there relevance to the fact that they're all on the back? And because like it's, the fish is still growing, so it's. Right, right, absolutely. Because we want we want that red to be very, very stable uh, in that end scale. Uh, so if we had if we had pink here, it would mean either red is fading, uh, or it's just going to be blurry there all the time. So we want we want like our anchor in the back, which is that real, real clean red. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, I think that's a nice way to end end our Kohaku discussion. Yeah. I right. Like yeah. Awesome, Sean. Well, thanks a lot on this one. Yeah, of course, Eric. We'll catch you again real soon on yep. the next one. See you, right. man. Have a great day. Take, take care. Well, that ends our discussion on the Kohaku for today. A big thanks to Mystic Koi and Sean McHenry for sharing all their knowledge and expertise. Until next time, I'm Eric Triplett, the Pond Digger. Thanks for watching.